Just over a little more than two weeks ago, Deathloop released to critical acclaim. And speaking from my own personal experience, I can also say that it absolutely is a truly awesome game. And it is arcane at their best. But I remember not long ago, the question being raised by one Jeff Grubb of VentureBeat is Arcane Microsoft's Insomniac. And I gotta be honest, I definitely had some thoughts about this one, even before the question was ever raised. So I figured I'd make a video on this and discuss those thoughts with all of you. So let's get right into it. And first up, I want to say that I am making this video as someone who loves both Xbox and PlayStation, as well as someone who is admittedly an Arcane fanboy. I also want to say that there will be no slights toward Insomniac whatsoever in this video. Insomniac is an insanely talented developer, responsible for some of my favorite games of all time, from the Resistance series all the way back on PS3, to Sunset Overdrive on Xbox One, Spider-Man 2018, and Miles Morales more recently. But in today's video, I want to talk about how I think Arcane has a legitimate chance to become Microsoft's Insomniac. The first reason I think this is because we all know that there are two Arcane studios around the world. There's Arcane Leon, who just released Deathloop, and then there is, of course, Arcane Austin, who is hard at work on the release of Redfall next summer. And what's cool about this is that if you're deciding to wait until Deathloop hits Xbox next September to jump in, then you'll likely be getting Redfall and Deathloop back to back on the Xbox platform. And of course, during this next year of development for Redfall, the Arcane Leon team will likely be starting work on their next project. And then once that cycle starts, it's just going to go back and forth. And let's be honest, this isn't even counting the teams within both of these studios that are likely hard at work on other things as well. I mean, not too long ago when the NVIDIA leaks happened, one of the games that was on that list, codenamed Black Sky, is speculated to be a sequel to 2017's Prey. In which case, that would mean that there is likely a team within Arcane Austin that is in the early stages of work on this sequel. But that's all speculation and hearsay until we get solid confirmation that the game even exists. But what isn't speculation or hearsay is Arcane's ability to create incredibly engaging games with gameplay that is completely unique to them and industry-leading level design. And it all kind of starts with Dishonored back in 2012, because before Dishonored, Arcane had worked on and shipped multiple games, but most fans will say that 2012 is when they really hit their stride. And with the exception of Wolfenstein Youngblood, I think it's fair to say that they've only put out quality games. And even then, it's not like Wolfenstein Youngblood has terrible gameplay. I mean, it's Wolfenstein, it's fun, it's just, it's a game that didn't need to exist. And here's the thing, I don't even blame them for Youngblood, because that was before the acquisition by Microsoft. And I imagine that ZeniMax was just trying to find ways to monetize existing IPs for an era of third-party gaming that seemed, and still quite honestly, seems to be headed towards heavy monetization. I mean, let's be honest, they did it with Fallout 76 and they tried it with Wolfenstein Youngblood, but now they're under the umbrella of Microsoft and they don't have to worry about the business end of things. They don't have to worry about finding ways to monetize games that are traditionally single player. Arcane's games, as much as I love them, I really do love them, I am an Arcane fanboy, their games do not sell well, and that's a problem when you're not under the umbrella of a corporation who can just pump money into you all the time. And that's what Microsoft can do. Because we remember, before the Microsoft acquisition, there were rumors of Arcane maybe getting axed, and that would have been absolutely horrible. Like, you can go back and look at sales for Dishonored, it didn't sell well. Dishonored 2, amazing game even better than Dishonored 1, didn't sell well. Death of the Outsider, didn't sell well. Prey, did not sell well. And I'll bet you money that Deathloop will not sell well also. But the thing is, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter when you have the financial backing of Microsoft. Arcane's not going anywhere now, and I think that, that is great for the gaming industry. And now that they've got that financial backing, all they have to worry about at this point is continuing to create unique games like they have always done. 
And if we've already established that they can do this, then really the only question left when comparing them to Insomniac is the rate at which these games come out. And this is the only place I think that I can say Insomniac has Arcane beat. And keep in mind, I'm only talking about right now. I mean, who knows what happens after we get Redfall and Deathloop on Xbox. Maybe they hit another stride and just start releasing games back and forth at a rapid pace. And let's be realistic, I think that there's only two or three studios under Xbox Game Studios that have the ability to do that. One of them is Arcane, and the other two are Obsidian and The Coalition. And these studios are a bit different than Arcane, right? Like, Obsidian is definitely a quality studio, but they're in the business of making vast RPGs like The Outer Worlds 2 and Avowed. And The Coalition is a really good studio in my opinion, but I think they need more freedom to experiment outside of the Gears universe. And that's why I'm really excited to see what their next project is in between Gears 5 and Gears 6. But the thing about Arcane is that we've seen them do different takes on this immersive sim genre that they've seemed to master. We've seen Dishonored, we've seen Prey, and now we've seen Deathloop, and next year we'll be seeing Redfall. And I think that if Redfall hits and it gets the praise that Deathloop is receiving right now, then this conversation goes to an entirely different level. And at that point, I think we can start to say that Arcane is the crown jewel of Xbox Game Studios. So to answer the question, do I think Arcane can rival Insomniac? The answer is right now, I don't think they are rivaling Insomniac. But I'd say let's revisit this question after Redfall and Deathloop release on Xbox, because who knows? Maybe in between that time, we'll see a trailer for the next big Arcane game at the Game Awards, or maybe we see it at the next E3. All I know for sure is that Arcane's quality has never come into question for me. Their ability to tell amazing and immersive stories is absolutely undeniable, and right now it's no secret that Microsoft got their hands on an absolute gem of a developer by bringing them in along with the rest of ZeniMax. But that's my thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments what you folks are thinking. Leave a like if you liked the video, and please remember to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content, and ring the bell to stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.